Hey gang! Today we're going to be talking about several different systems for describing and representing color. Specifically, we're going to explore the model of hue, saturation, and brightness, as well as talk about how all colors can be made from a combination of red, green, and blue light mixing. Quick before we get there. As you read, the portion of the electromagnetic spectrum between about 400 nanometers and 750 nanometers is what humans can see. That is the Goldilocks zone of the visible spectrum. Light that's about 400 nanometers we typically perceive as blue, and light near 700 nanometers we perceive as being red. That's a bit of an oversimplification, but it's a convenient oversimplification just for now. So if we have a light source that produces 700 nanometer light, we are likely perceiving that as red. However, many of the, the things that we see produce or reflect multiple wavelengths simultaneously. For instance, sunlight doesn't appear to have one specific color. If anything, it looks clear or maybe kind of white. That's because sunlight is a mixture of wavelengths from across the visible spectrum. So this represents the intensity of light at various wavelengths for various sources of illumination. Sunlight produces what we call white light a combination of all wavelengths of the visible spectrum simultaneously. At sunset, the intensities are higher at longer wavelengths, leading to a redder perception. LED lights tend to have more energy at uh, shorter wavelengths, so they tend to look bluer. The fact that sunlight contains all wavelengths is what made it possible for Newton to see multiple wavelengths of light refracted by his prism. Now, as you read, the colors that objects appear uh, are in part a function of illumination. Is the light uh, daylight or an LED light bulb, for instance? It's also a function of the wavelengths of light that they absorb or reflect. So a red object in sunlight, that is white light, which has all wavelengths present simultaneously, appears red to us because it is absorbing all of the shorter and medium wavelengths and reflecting only the long wavelengths. So the long wavelengths are all that actually reach our eyes. We can see the same thing in a slightly different format here. These representations are called reflectance curves, and they quantify the amount of light reflected and absorbed by different objects. So the percentage of light reflected is represented up the y-axis, and the wavelength of light is shown along the x-axis. So a tomato, for instance, is absorbing wavelengths below 550 nanometers and reflecting those above. So when longer wavelength light is present, they're reflecting off the tomato, and that is what hits our eyes the long wavelengths. The shorter wavelengths are absorbed. White paper, on the other hand, reflects all wavelengths pretty equally, meaning it absorbs very little and reflects everything. So white light bouncing off paper uh, contains all wavelengths. Colors like white and gray and black are sometimes called achromatic colors, meaning that they reflect all wavelengths of light equally. It's very democratic of them. So the wavelengths of uh, light that an object reflects or a light source produces is a major influence on the colors that we perceive. And we refer to that dimension uh, uh, that's associated with wavelengths as hue. So hue is typically what lay people mean when they talk about color. It's determined in part by the wavelengths of light that are reflected. So as you move around this colorful wheel, what is changing as you go from location to location is hue. So the way that a bright orange and bright blue differ from one another is hue. Objects that create these two reflectance curves you see differ only in hue. So we'd call the one at shorter wavelengths blue and the one at longer wavelengths orange. In the schematic I just showed, this means that the objects are reflecting a pretty narrow band of wavelengths from about 400 nanometers to 450 nanometers uh, and, and absorbing the rest. So colors can differ from one another in hue. They can also differ from one another in how saturated they are. So saturation refers to the purity of the light. We can talk about colors in terms of being pastel or deep, and those are features that have to do with saturation. Colors that are highly saturated are reflecting only a very narrow spectral band. Highly unsaturated colors are reflecting a much wider spectral band. So black, white, and gray are all fully unsaturated. They're reflecting all the wavelengths, just more or less of them. White light contains all wavelengths of light. So does gray. Uh, gray absorbs some of the light from each wavelength and reflects some. Black absorbs all equally. So white, gray, and black, very fair. They're treating all of the wavelengths equally. 
when you're painting, one of the things that's, that differentiates better and worse paints, why some are more expensive, is in part uh, because better paints are more highly saturated. It's hard to get chemicals that reflect only a narrow band of wavelengths. Finally, colors also differ in terms of their brightness, which is also sometimes called value. And brightness is the perceived intensity of a light. Colors can have the same hue and saturation, but differ in how much light they reflect. So this bright blue and this darker blue are both reflecting 500 nanometer light uh, in a relatively narrow band, so they're pretty saturated. Uh, one is reflecting lots of lights, that, lots of light, that is the taller peak, the bright blue, and the darker blue is, is reflecting less. Okay, so to review, hue varies uh, according to what we typically think of as color. Saturation varies from white, wholly unsaturated, to fully saturated. And brightness or value ranges from black to fully bright. Now, in addition to the hue, saturation, brightness, or the HSB model, there's another uh, method for describing colors um, that I want to draw your attention to because it may well come up later in the class. So rather than the HSB scheme, people sometimes describe color using an HSL scheme, hue, saturation, and lightness. Uh, so in this model, hue is identical to the hue and hue, saturation, brightness. Saturation still refers to purity, but here the lowest level of saturation is gray rather than white. And finally, HSL is symmetrical from lightness to darkness. So in HSL, lightness always spans the entire range from black through the chosen hue to white. So these ways of thinking about color can both represent the same range of colors. All that differs is the, the terminology and kind of what the neutral points represent. So HSB and HSL are ways of representing color space by making hue continuous corresponding to wavelength primarily, and then adjusting the purity and the amount of light. Now, despite the fact that the visible spectrum contains almost an infinite number of gradations of color, it's possible to represent every point on the visible spectrum using only three colors, the three primaries of light, blue, green, and red. These are different from primary colors for pigments, the red and yellow and blue that you likely learned as a kid in art class. So why are blue and green and red special for light mixing? Um, the answer lies in the fact that it's possible to generate every color on the visible spectrum, as well as many off the visible spectrum, using only those three colors. So by turning up or down the brightness or intensity of each of those colors, we can recreate any others. This can be done empirically in a lab setting, where you par present participants with one color, like this kind of fuchsia square on the bottom, and then you let them adjust the levels of blue and green and red light sources to get them to try to match the, the test swatch, that fuchsia color. For people with typical human color vision, any color can be made with a match of these three primaries. Don't believe me? Let's try it out. All right, so the goal is we're trying to get this color, this kind of lavender, pinkish, purplish. We're trying to use these three colors to mix together to make it. So is light purple? So we're definitely gonna need red and blue, but we'll also need some green to make it unsaturated. So let's crank up the red, let's crank up the blue, and then also we're gonna need to bring up some green, get that nice and unsaturated. Maybe that seems a little too pink. Let's crank down the pink, maybe a little bit. Huh? Oh, I think that is looking, I think that's looking pretty good. What do you think? Let's test it out. Yeah. So despite the fact that we are able to perceive lots of different colors, maybe millions, depends how you measure it, um, that despite this tremendous variability in the colors that we can see, uh, we can describe them using these relatively simple building blocks of hue, saturation, and brightness, and the RGB model. These are gonna be useful to us all term as we talk about different ways of describing and representing the colors that we see. Both HSB and RGB can be used to represent the same colors. It's simply using different systems to do so. In class, you'll have opportunities to practice mixing colors using the different systems and getting comfortable converting from one to the other. Let me know if you have any questions, and I look forward to seeing you in class.